talk about the Naira now on TVC Breakfast. Uh, it's good to have you join us again. The Naira is falling, and this great fall is at a huge cost to the Nigerian economy. The depreciating value of the country's currency is also affecting livelihoods and businesses, with cost of operation and production going up from between 30 to 100 percent. And as a result, uh, this is as a result of the exchange rate crisis. Over the years, the Central Bank of Nigeria has taken many steps to stem the free fall of the Naira, but this has yielded little efforts. It's prohibited the sale of Forex to Bureau of the Change operators, but the Naira continues to plummet. The big question is how can the Naira be strengthened? Joining us now via Zoom is a macroeconomic and public affairs, a public policy analyst, Professor Kenny Fee. Thank you very much and welcome to uh, TVC Breakfast. Let's ask first what oh, you thank make. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you to Prof. But let's ask what you make of the situation the Naira is in uh, right now. Of course, it's not just a sudden uh, trail now. It's been going on for a long time. Yeah, um, the situation of Naira is, um, is a very difficult one but it is not unconnected to a global phenomenon that is pushing inflation and pushing the prices of all currencies against the dollar. Dollar has gained um, on parallel gain of over one, over about 12% or something like 12.5%. It's now running flat, neck on neck with Euro. And then not to talk of uh, so, so all currency that are, are pegged on the dollar are, are, are really being uh, repriced at the moment. So Nigeria is not an exception. And secondly, Nigeria is, uh, is an import dependent economy. Mm -hmm. And um, and what that means is that Nigerian economy is on the transmission belt of global supply chain uh, dynamics. Any little thing that happens anywhere affects Nigeria because we are depending on importing stuff and then we are, we are hopelessly dependent on foreign forex coming in from oil, which should be about 80%, and very little investment is coming in. So we are quite vulnerable in that respect to, to be able to defend the Naira and fight against the wave. And more so that a CBN usually expects about three billion dollars every month from NNPC, a crude supply, a crude proceeds. But over last year and even now, they haven't even seen the money, anything, because NNPC is doing a direct swap with refiners, push a direct crude swap, sending crude to them and receiving uh, PMS in return. So that has compounded the challenge. So you are now having a central bank that is struggling to find something from somewhere. Uh, and it doesn't print dollars. So it's a very difficult situation. So if, if we had enough reserves, so we could have just fought back to, to push up the price of uh, Naira relative to dollar, even though dollar has strengthened globally by over 12 and a half percent. So that's the situation that we have. Mm -hmm. Well, well Prof Professor Ken, um, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's really a very difficult situation we find ourselves as a nation because um, I remember this particular administration uh, had, uh, you know, promised Nigerians that, look, we we'll have to produce what we eat and eat what we produce. And um, the borders were shut for many months despite calls from uh, the north, south, east and west. It fell on deaf ears. So... How come that even though we're made to go through this kind of very difficult and hard situation, we are still a, a country that imports? Well, is 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 easier said than done. Actually, what you have is um, I've just explained from the from the forex point of view because forex is pricing policy. And pricing, it requires a, a, a some kind of balance between the demand and supply. And uh, you have, because of our import dependence, we have more than two times more requests for forex for imports than what we actually earn. And I've just shown you that we are not earning up to 80% of what is gone out because you see, you know, NAPC is doing something else. And at the same time, at the same time, 
pushing up a huge bill to the government, telling government to go and, you know, what he says that, look, the cost of the revenue from bringing crude is uh, lower than the cost of transporting it to refine, refining it and bringing it back. So the difference between the two is what they call under recovery. So government, go and find me 4 trillion naira to subsidize this import of PMS. And can you imagine how much pressure that is going to add on not only our debt, but the servicing of that debt and the, the failure of government to receive enough money to spend on, on the capital expenditure, salaries and all of that, and then how it now affects inflation. So you have things that you not even people are not even talking about. What people are talking about is that our central bank should go and print dollar that we don't have, we don't even print, we can't, and create money from nowhere. The only money, if you look at foreign direct investment, has crashed. It used to be about eight to ten billion. We're talking about less than eight hundred million dollars last year, and even now only two hundred million dollars. And mm. then in foreign portfolio investment that used to be quite high, over 10 billion, is a scratch. It's all mm. gone because of the what is going on in, in America is strengthening their dollar and that also they've ended their quantitative easing and, taper, and now they are now uh, uh, pushing up base rates. So we're in a very tight corner. Mm. And then you, you look at expenditure, look at how much, I mean, you've had uh, announcements a few days ago that the revenue of the government is not even enough to service the debt. Okay, mm. That's, that was said. But that doesn't mean that Nigeria is bankrupt, by all means it's not. Mm. But it's also, you can also see that government is pushed into having to go and borrow 500 billion naira every month for subsidy, mm. which means it's not even the 4 trillion they're talking about, it might end up at 6 trillion. Mm. Then you've also seen that defense spending consumes 22% of this year's budget. Defense alone, are you going to stop spending on defense? You've got just gotten four, six new helicopters. Are you not going to pay salaries of staff, which is more than it was almost 40% of the, of, the, of the revenue? So where are you going to go? Then we haven't even talked about the ways and means, which is over 18 trillion. And that 18 trillion is being rescheduled into a 30 year loan with two year moratorium, which actually means that this uh, government will not pay. It has to be for the future government. Mm. And uh, can you imagine how the, in the rate at which you will service that loan? It has to be the base rate, which is now 14% plus 2%. So about 16%. 16% of 18 trillion is over 3 trillion a year, then divide the 18 trillion by 30 years so that you can see what goes out. You're looking at well over 4 trillion that is going to be going out just to service the overdraft that Central Bank gave to, uh, to the country. So right, if you can't imagine the size of the, of the challenge. Um, but why I say that is not, uh, doesn't amount to liquidation or doesn't amount to insolvency is because all of these debts are debt. You know, the, the, you know that the, we are not. We have also that, that debt financing. Mm. That's why we are having this issue. If we begin to shift and restructure and head towards uh, asset-based financing, then the story will change. And let me give you an example of that. Saudi Arabia needed twenty-five billion dollars. They didn't go to IMF or World Bank. They said, "Oh, ah, Saudi Aramco is our prime company. Can you just tell me the value of it?" They valued it. it was only almost about one point five trillion. So they said, okay, put 5% in the market, and then they got the money that they wanted. Mm -hmm. Today, Saudi Aramco is what is valued at $2.3 trillion, the highest valuation of a valuable company in the world, mm -hmm. uh, before, after, the, and, uh, followed by Apple and Microsoft and those mm -hmm. likes. All right, so we should do the same for NMPC. Yeah, so, so NMPC is, our, is, is one solid asset that we mm -hmm. can. We can uh, uh, yes. not privatized, we can just value, get to the capital market and get about, because I, I reckon it's more than 100 trillion, 100 uh, billion dollars, the asset. They, they, are, they are saying net asset is 60 billion dollars. I know 
a lot more than 100 mm. uh, billion Pro prof we, we, issue, would, we would we would we would uh, engage you very shortly on the, on the ways forward from this dilemma where we find ourselves now as a country uh, but from what you've said and confirmed on our platform we are not just broke as uh, madam minister says zainab ahmed we are also bankrupt and um i am very particular and concerned about the future uh, so the 30 year plan i am just wondering when you look at our level of borrowings and the fact that every single year since 2012 our currency has uh, always weakened since 2012 I, I wonder what the possible um uh, consequences are the possible dangers that lie ahead for us as a people, as a nation? Well, that is if this, these dangers will, will escalate if nothing is done. So that's why do nothing is not an option. Now, if you look at the, I painted a picture of equilibrium pricing on Forex because Forex is price. Mm. And because there is no prospect of both of them meeting, then you can now understand why CBN has moved to a program called a risk for um, $200 billion non-oil export. Quite commendable because you are now shifting the resources and uh, to, to focus on non-oil export, hoping that over the next uh, three years, you will be able to raise $200 billion from non-oil export. That is the only way you can begin to dent the, the equation. In other words, to begin to bring sanity and clarity on how we can uh, increase the value of our Naira and then deal with. But you cannot also uh, avoid, you know, tightening up on import. You know, uh, CBN, the uh, delisted 41 items from Forex eligibility, they didn't ban them. Uh, and not that we want them to ban those, but what I, I have been saying is that the Ministry of Finance can use some fiscal instruments um, the order called levy because we are part of ECOWAS common external tariff, so we can't really increase. Um, we can't really increase uh, those because there's there's band zero, uh, the five, ten percent, twenty, and thirty five. We can't touch those. But what we can do is to use the levy instrument to augment the duty on those. Uh, so that they you are actually sending a clear message to those who are importing these free for us items that you, if you want to do that you're going to pay heavier tax so we'll get more revenue from you and if you look at the trade balance between nigeria and china it's awful it's over two trillion just you know, importing what look at what they're importing anything and everything just to make money and then when they import that a lot of it don't doesn't actually give us that because they get the small go through the borders the, the, they pass it. There's an inflation pass through to the to the to the to the, to the citizens. So that's why we need to bump up tax on those and widen the net, increase the number of uh, items that are uh, delisted, uh, so that you can get more revenue. The issue for the government now is revenue. It is revenue. It's not about the debt we are owing. It's about the revenue to service the debt. Every country borrows. Now, the revenue is only 7% of our GDP, government revenue. Now, the lowest in Africa. The average is our 18%. And then ECOWAS macroeconomic convergence criteria put it at 20% minimum. We are three times underpowered in terms of revenue. Which, what does it mean? It means that if Nigeria is a, is a trailer, then the engine driving that trailer is Volkswagen. Can you imagine that? That is what it is, looks like. So we need to ramp up revenue. You ramp up revenue by reducing the cost. For example, the waivers, the tax waivers given to companies have to be revisited strongly because it's huge. Then you look at the leakages in the system. You, you don't go to overtax the current people who are paying the tax, mostly the civil servants. And only right. Prof, if a, professor, if a, let, let me also ask. That tax net. Right. Prof, let me also ask about um, the role the BDCs have played so far in ameliorating the Naira crisis or in um, worsening it. Of course, the CBN has had a tough stance on them at a point, or even up till now, we understand that um, he has even stopped, uh, the CBN has stopped selling dollars to the BDCs, but they are still in operation. So what should 
be done now about the BDCs and um, how do you weigh their involvement in the crisis? I'm not sure the, the, the problem is too much to do with BDCs. The thing that we need diversity in our, you know, you know this is, a, this is a, a, a capital economy. This is a free market economy. And you should encourage diversity of, of participants in this economy. 93% of our forex occurs at the national uh, NAFEX window. That's the importer-exporter window. It's only 7% that is actually in this black market of BDCs. So the way you tackle it is not to destroy them. No, you can't. And then it's not because they are serving a constituency, a constituency of some micros that can't get a small business that can't access the, the money through the commercial, commercial banking structure. There are some personal people who can't get the money and then they go to them urgent because our children are abroad and you need to pay the fee at a particular time. And if you can't get it from the banking system because there's shortage, they find somewhere else, but you pay the penalty. So what we need to do is to manage the flow resources. For example, you have a high speculation going on in our economy. And what that speculation means, people are speculating that the, the currency is going to drop further. And when you are speculating that it is going to further devalue, then they go and borrow money and buy dollar and hold the dollar and wait for one month for that uh, Naira to collapse in value. And then they just go and sell and make huge profit, 40, 50%. That's speculation. Then you have politicians that are buying dollar because they want to use dollar to settle, not rather than carry bulk, bulky uh, Naira. Then you also have um, insecurity playing its own part in affecting the structural economics of the country and then depressing uh, investment. Uh, foreign investors are not bringing their dollars. They are worried about security, so many other things. And then you have what the fuel is doing to us. Energy costs has come up phenomenally. Can you imagine? 400% diesel mm. from over just over 200 to now over 850. Can you imagine that? How, which economy can sustain 400% increase in input costs of that nature? And then in there, the knock-on effect of electricity price going up, everything. So if you come to road transportation, is is huge. This is the cost, and then food being transported. The cost is not just the food, but the cost of transporting it. So we are having enormous pressure, and they all come back to that pricing, which is the, is the forex pricing. It comes back to the inflation uh, that you are seeing, which is a price, and it comes out. It comes out to uh, NTB to the MPR, uh, uh, the ratio, the MPR is pricing, in, uh, interest rate charged by banks is pricing. All this price, look at demand and supply, and there's so many structural factors holding down on the supply of forex and the um, cost of production that you cannot expect central bank monetary policy to deal with all of that. Fiscal policy has to come out and, 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 and join in. But they're trying because you have a massive revenue uh, mobilization challenge uh, from uh, finance, but we need to do more. Mm. Right, and, and, and this more that you're talking about, uh, though you have also advocated earlier that um, CPN should also liberalize uh, the forex market, does this also extend to regular companies that trade in dollar? Because some have, have said that is um, that, that the CBN should do that, you know, stop companies from trading with each other in the dollar currency as that uh, further weakens uh, the Naira and the economy as a whole? Well, CBN is only trying to implement what the law says, especially what the Buffer Act and all that says. So they, they're following the law by telling you to be careful, you have to do this, this is the proper way to do it. If you are going to port, you open an export domiciliary account, then receive money, your dollar proceed into this account. And if you want to push some of them into the window, NAFEX window for, for people to also buy, we will certify you by giving you 65 Naira per one dollar. If you want to consume it in your own import of your machinery, then we'll certify you with 35 Naira per, per dollar. So they're doing what they can within the law. I'm not sure they're in the business of trying to arbitrarily just block people from trading or from it. I'm not sure that is what they're, they're after. They're also concerned that there are the likelihood of um, illicit transfers going on and they have 
terrorism financing and they have all kind of uh, money laundering activities in the in the black market tier so they couldn't allow the dollar that they don't have to be um, you know enmeshed in those kind of illicit transactions yeah. well prof let, let me take you up on something you said earlier because you you have uh, you had encouraged uh, the administration to diversify and I remember that this uh, particular administration had bragged about the fact that uh, there were plans to diversify. Uh, they, they have a lot of programs by the CBN, the Angobora scheme, and seedlings and all of that to farmers and, and all of that. So I, I wonder just what is your assessment of uh, the, the, this, uh, the, the diversification plan of this uh, particular administration in the last seven uh, or almost eight years? Well, let me tell you something, you know, in all fairness, we, over the last 60 years or more, we have been hearing about diversification and it's more like lip service being paid to it. Mm. The only pseudo diversification that I have seen was the cement, the backward integration around cement. If you remember in 1974, 75, we had cement scandal in the country and the economy was brought to a standstill. Obasanjo's regime now embarked on the backward integration of cement. And then Gote was a big beneficiary and it worked. We are now nearly an, a net export of cement. Then we came into this regime and saw that rice was the biggest grain being consumed. And in other food imports, we are over $12.5 billion. So the CBN said they can't do this because they, they were in a position in 2017 where they're only receiving $1 billion a month, and the request for export for import was $4.6 billion. There was no way they could that magic. They can't mm -hmm. bring them down. So he said, okay, they tried many things they did. They tried macro prudential measures. They, they restricted foreign exchange movement between banks and between individuals. They tried capital account control. JP Morgan launched on us, and Barclays Bank, they now tried devaluation, devaluation. He didn't want to move to demand management. Mm. And say, so, all right, it's for, two, for three items, now 41. I can't give you foreign exchange. And there's no law anywhere, no treaty anywhere that says central banks should be giving foreign exchange. So we, can, we don't have it. So find somewhere else. So that was what they did. But now to match it, because you are not saying all the food coming in, sorry, I'm not going to give you, you're not saying Nigerians should starve. So they now turned around to use domestic finance intervention to wade into agriculture. Mm. And let me tell you this. If the central bank did not do what they did with Anko Borowa's program, which today is putting one trillion naira to over five million farmers, loan with no collateral, they're producing over five million metric tons of rice. If they didn't do what they did in, in Anko Borowa's program, more people in this country would have died of starvation mm. and uh, uh, abject poverty and COVID than, than uh, the terrorism and COVID would have put, uh, mm. put together more people would have been dying more than what the COVID and all the terrorism, all of them put together. You know, it is just that. That's the saving grace. But we can do more. So from for, to all intent and purposes, Nigeria is sorted on rice, sorted on cement. Mm. We need to sort other things out. We need to sort out um, soya beans, um, cassava. Cassava, Nigeria produces 71% of world cassava. 71%. We can get twice more revenue than government just from cassava alone. And I have seen people with export orders of 2 million metric tons from China, from America, asking for this cassava organic though. They want organic. And then you have soya beans, you have uh, other cro crops, cocoa, and well, we have crops that are heavily needed. Let me tell you why this situation is like this. Mm -hmm. America and China have fallen out. So all these nearly $100 billion trade going on between them, They've, they've fallen out. So both of them are in Africa looking for where to grow these crops, replacement. Mm. And Nigeria is the target, but they want organic. America wants this organic produce to produce food for children. You know, children are infant food. Uh, uh, China needs them. Uh, the cassava, you know, just wash it and cut it like that, leave the back. They would it for feed, producing feed for cattle and uh, for, for pig and all of that. America needs them peeled and then it must be organic for all those. So they all need it. Nigeria needs to get more aggressive on producing what we know we can produce. We have the agroecology to produce them. We need to mechanize them, put money there and get something relief. So that's Let me ask. Uh, We're going to sit down here and be talking about what we are talking about. Nothing is going to change.
Right, Prof, let me ask you briefly, uh, though we've run out of time, uh, but looking at, you know, the policy and after policy, policy after policy of the Apex Bank, that has also been scrutinized, especially with one of its directive uh, earlier, like a few days ago, that it is illegal for anyone to buy a dollar with the Naira. So, so where is this coming from and to what end? Some have even said that the, the CBN has become a toothless bulldog and obviously cannot en enforce this. Uh, if, even claiming that it is illegal. Where, where do you stand in this? Well, what I, I'm, I'm not going to say that CBN can never be wrong or right. So no, what it is that CBN quotes a law, a relevant section of the law or the act that empowers them to do or say what they say. I mean, you can always open that to scrutiny. And, but I am after what the positive things that are being done. The, R the RT, uh, the RF $200 billion program to get money here. And they're already disbursing billions of Naira now, encouraging people to bring in Forex. That is going on. So you can see it, there is now light in the end of the tunnel. What I'm saying that the government needs to do a lot more on the fiscal side, because we are borrowing and all of the narrative around our debt is debt finance, debt finance. Can we have asset-based finance? Can we look at uh, uh, this NNPC now that's now a private company and go and capitalize it, go and, go and find out the value of that. And if it is $100 billion, take it to the capital market and say, look, I want 40%. Sell 40% to people, Nigerian citizens, including the people in the in the uh, Niger Delta and the, 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 the all these uh, labor people that are agitating. Let them go and buy shares. Mm. And then, and all the oil companies, they probably go and buy shares so that everybody owns that and they will stop bunkering and destroying the pipeline because they're all equity holders in this company, all expecting dividend. And they use this 40 billion, uh, billion dollars of proceeds to reduce the debt, to refinance NMPC and sort out some of the problem. You can't sit on assets and then you're whiling away and creating more. No, we have to head out more. And I've given you an example of Saudi Aramco how it has solved Saudi Arabia's problem. That is where we need to go. I know we have over 800 companies, the Ministry of Finance Incorporated have given to Bureau of Public Enterprise to, to privatize, but that's taking time. This is a simple one. And then this is now ready to go and we can see it. And it has a lot of dead weight in the system, paying salaries for four refineries who are not producing anything. They're carrying a lot of dead weight. And because of that dead weight, you are now going to see it play at at, uh, despite the PIA that has trying to sort things out and uh, wrestle, remove their hands on the tail, they are now still going to pass on a lot of their, of their overhead on import of, of PMS. So I'm going to deal with this issue. Let's, let's make, get the politicians, all the presidential candidates to address the crisis, potential crisis that are looming and look, at, look, look us in the face and say, I'm going to make sure I put this company on the capital market by next year. And then Citizens are actually going to own it. And by the way, governor forum should have one man on the board of this uh, uh, NMPC because the governors and the local government, or even Algon, could put mm. one local government person there. So yeah. those are these are stakeholders. They have to be represented. And mm. then get the people to buy shares so that they can have interest in protecting this asset that's, that's what, and enhancing it. All right, Prof. I mean, it's indeed an engaging, uh, it's been an engaging time with you. Um, we are absolutely pressed for time, so we have to let you go now. But uh, we'd like to thank you most kindly, Professor Kenny Fay, microeconomic and public uh, policy analyst. Thank you indeed for the insights, uh, amazing and fascinating insights indeed. We thank you most kindly for speaking with TVC Breakfast. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah.